Uh, greetings and welcome. Uh, so this time I'm going to continue my video series on the almighty power of God. Uh, this will be part four where I talk about how the power of God saves souls. So I just have two verses to read out of Romans and just to say a few things. And yeah, that'll, uh, that'll end this uh, video series on the almighty power of God. So my first verse is uh, Romans 1.16. So Romans chapter 1, verse 16. So here in Romans 1, 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So first of all, he's not ashamed. So Paul is not ashamed. He goes out and he witnesses. So that's good. He... He, like, he lives what he preaches. You know, he preaches that um, you need Jesus Christ to be saved, and he lets other people know. So, you know, so he's not ashamed of it. So that, that, that says a lot, and that's something we can all uh, learn from, is to not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, and to tell other people about Jesus, and to use whatever methods uh, we can to witness. Um you know, for me, I decided that I think this is this is something that will work, right? Starting a YouTube channel. One new way of witnessing, I'm using the technology at my disposal to witness. Many have done it already. There's tons of YouTube channels with, you know, about God and about the Bible and Jesus. And I'm hoping a lot of them are accurate. Some of them, some of them probably aren't. But, you know, a lot of these people are doing their best. They're doing what God called them to do. And, um... I, I, I can respect him for that. I think that's great. So, we, you know, we need to use the tools at our disposal to witness in uh, whatever capacity we have. So, Romans 1.16, uh, For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, um, it saves you. The power of God saves you. That's what that's what saves you, the power of God. It's not you. Your, your works don't save you. So I, I think I've mentioned that, like, I, I, I know I've mentioned that in several videos already, that uh, you do not, like, your works are not going to save you. It is Jesus Christ that saves you. You simply believe it is God's power that saves you. You, you cannot, like, unsave yourself. Like, your own works, your own power can't do anything. You simply accept God. God sets the rules. He says, trust in Jesus. You accept. That's it. You cannot save yourself through your works and your best efforts. It just doesn't work like that because your best efforts are still nothing. They're still sinful. You're a sinner. God had to die. Jesus Christ had to die. There's nothing you can do. None of your, your, your best sacrifices are not going to get you to heaven. It just does not work like that. Um, you can... You can, you know, you, uh, you do good things to have a good relationship with God after you're saved. Without yourself, without salvation, all your good deeds, they mean literally nothing, like less than nothing. It's a drop in a giant bucket, a giant ocean, and your debt, it will not repay your debt. Your, 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 your sin debt is like in, in, in infinite dollars. That, that, that's, that's your sin debt. You know, trillions of dollars or even better, like just say infinite you're, it's negative infinity. That's how that's how that's that's how much money you have in in spiritual uh, good deeds. Negative infinity. You will not pay that off and get it back to zero or even above that. It just does. It just not going to happen. You need Jesus. Jesus paid it all. Okay. Jesus paid your sin debt. So just remember that. I brought that up many many times. I will keep bringing that up because some people just don't get it. It's simple. It's in the Bible, but people just don't get it. Um, so he has the power to save us, and he will use it. So that's the power of God. It saves souls. That The power of God does that. You don't do that. You cannot save yourself. It does not work like that. God saves you. The power of God is what saves you. So it says to the Jew first and also to the Greek, because the Jews heard, you know, had the first chance to hear the gospel. Uh, that's that's why it says to the Jew first, and then to the Greek. Then the gospel went out to everyone else, and you know, in in uh, in Christ, everyone's equal. So whatever your nationality is or background, it doesn't matter. You get saved the same way. Actually, you you are the same before God, regardless of age, gender, 
race, um, you know, in, in the real world, all of those things play a role. All of those things are important. They change, uh, like where you're born, your family status, all of that affects um, the rest of your life. All of these little, all these factors affect your life. But when it comes to getting saved, everybody gets saved the same way. You get saved by trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's the same. Nobody gets special preferential bonuses for some for for salvation. No, you get saved the same way. And yeah, and God God's gonna judge you equally for the for you know having a good relationship. You know, you're it's it's the same. Everybody's the same before God. So anyway, so I just want to point that out because you know it does say to the Jew first, also the Greek, because that's you know, chron chronologically, that, that, that is how things played out. You know, the, the Jews got to hear it first, and then the Greeks got to hear it. So, and now there will be a time in the future during the tribulation, and then, the, you know, where, um, you know, the, the it, being a Jew will, will play a role. Like, God's going to come back, and he's going to deal with his people. And, uh, you know, so, you know, uh, so some Christians, you know, they pay attention to what's going on in, in, in Israel. Like, I don't really pay attention that much, but some do. And they, you know, they look for prophecies in, you know, like what's going on in Israel right now. And, you know, that, that's, that's pretty cool to do, actually. Um, you, you can't see that. And God will continue to deal with, you know, his people, the Jews. It's just that, Right now, during the, the church age, during these, you know, 2,000 year period of time after, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, died and resurrected, during this time frame, um, being, you know, being a Jew does not, is not like a special privilege, you know, you get to say, you get to say the same way regardless. Um, but that does not mean in the future um, that will not play a certain role, you know, that will not be like a, like a certain status for being Jewish. Uh, so, and all of that is in the Bible, you know, um, all of that can be, you know, figured out, you know, I'm, and everything I'm saying, I'm just, I'm basing it off the same book, the same book that you probably have, the same Bible, but just, uh, some people never reach these conclusions, and some people can continue to reach the wrong conclusions. Uh, you would have um, uh, many Christians, uh, and pro probably Catholics in the past 2,000 years that were anti-Semitic, when uh, that was completely anti-biblical, that it is not what God intended for the Christians to be anti-Semitic. That that's just dumb. Like that, that that's not what the Bible teaches. That uh, like literally every author of every single book in in the Bible, with the exception of possibly Job, was written by a Jew. Like literally every single book of the Bible. This this is a Jewish book. The Bible is a Jewish book. The, not just the Old Testament, the New Testament too. Like the, all the authors are Jewish. You've got Paul, Peter, what John, uh, Luke, Mark. Like I hope I'm forgetting. There might be some others, but like there, there's just a few authors, right? Just, just from the New Testament. And then the Old Testament, it just just a bunch of prophets, all Jewish. Job was probably written by Elihu, who at that at that point there were no Jews, so that'd be like the one exception. Amid like you know the 66 books, one Job was written, but probably by a, a non-Jew, and th that's it. So, um, you know, obviously, yeah, God had a special people. So yeah, that that is going to play a role in the future. But you know, uh, I mean, it's good that in the current Christian environment, people have gotten a little more intelligent and wiser over the years. Uh, and you know, I, I don't like I've. I personally, I've never met anybody that was like anti-Jew. I know there's some crazy wackos out there that are still like that, but that that's not that's not that's not supposed to be a biblical sentiment. That's not that's not a Christian, you know. Uh, like uh, that that is not supposed to be something you believe if you if you are a Christian. That you know God uh, hates the Jews or to, to be anti-Semitic or something like that. Um, that that is uh, yeah that, that that's not a Christian uh, belief. So just want to point that out there. Um, you know, there there are a few people like that. I personally never met them though. I, I don't. I guess those kind of people don't. They don't really. I don't hang out with those kinds of people, so I don't. I don't find out about them. Um, so anyway, just knowing, uh, just talk. You know, just mentioning that at the end of verse sixteen, that is uh, that's talking about the chron chronology of people hearing the gospel. So anyway, that's one sixteen. And uh, yeah, the power the power of God can save everybody. There's no like limited atonement or 
some kind of Calvinism. It's not limited. Everybody can get it. The Jews can get it. The Greeks can get it, which is that basically just means everybody else. The, the Gentiles can get it. Everybody can get salvation, regardless of their background. So, uh, so that's 116. Uh, then we got Romans 838. I'm going to read one more verse. Uh, about how the power of God saves completely. So Romans 8.38. Well, what happened here? Uh, okay, let's change. I don't know. I've got some technical difficulties here. Okay, good. Romans 8.38. Uh, Romans 8.38, so, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So yeah, this is a great eternal security verse. Um, so literally nothing can separate you from the love of God. You cannot separate yourself from the love of God if you are saved. You know, if you're saved, you, you can't be separated from that. This is written to, to Christians, you know, people that are saved. And from, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities. So nothing. Angels can't do it. Principalities. So some government can't put you out. Like the Catholic Church can't tell you that you are going to hell. They don't know. They, they, they cannot make you go to hell. The Catholic Church cannot sentence you to hell. They've tried. They've done that plenty of times throughout the years. They would, uh, you know, they would say that they had, they did have the keys of uh, of heaven and hell, and they could decide who goes where. Uh, they never had that power. Only God has that power. If the Pope curses you, ignore him. He he doesn't know what he's talking about. The Pope, the Pope's curses can be ignored. If some, uh, yeah, just 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 letting you know. Is someone uh, some witch? Or if you run into some crazy person like this, like a witch or a Satanist, and they, they try to curse you, those curses cannot do anything to you unless God says they can do something to you. Um, if they can do something to you, and like if they can override God, then God isn't all powerful. So you're like, you're, if you're scared of these witches and Satanists, then you're saying that your God is weaker than them. Um, Obviously, our God is much stronger than whatever these witches or Satanists are trying to do. So if you get someone trying to curse you or damn you or something like that, literally, they cannot do anything to you. They cannot. Because if they could, because like unless God says it's okay, it's not going to happen. Satan couldn't curse Job unless God said it was okay. So God allowed Job to be cursed. Otherwise, like Satan had to go to God and get permission. Like, no, literally, he had to get permission. It's, it says that Satan had to go to God to get permission to curse Job. He, he said, like, oh, but he'll do And then God said, okay, you can do this, but you can't do this. God put restrictions on Satan. He told him, like, you can only go this far. You can curse him this much. He put restrictions. And Satan had to listen to God. He cannot, like, he actually can't go against God because, um, he, 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 like, God can stop Satan at any time. So, anyway, just letting you know, like, don't, like, because some people, like, some people will get saved and then they'll still, they'll still have this, like, worldly mindset of, like, old ways and old traditions and they don't understand, like, these things don't, like, they don't apply. Like, I've heard stories of, like, people getting saved and, like, some African villages, and there would be like a witch doctor in the village, and they would be scared of the witch doctor. And like these people are now Christians, they have God on their side, and they're scared of this witch doctor who can't do anything. He, he like literally the witch doctor just looks like some homeless mom. Uh, he can't do anything. He, I don't know what kind of voodoo magic he does. All of that that just worship like that just Satan worship. So he can't do anything to you, but they're still scared because you know it's it's, it's an old habit. They have this old habit that they think that this guy has power. He doesn't have any power. So just know, um, you know, the, the tradition, science, falsely so-called, uh, false, false teachings and philosophies, false religions. If you are, you know, if you used to belong to some cult uh, that was, you know, had beliefs that were anti. 
Christian. So sometimes it's easier for a non like a, like a, like an atheist to get saved than it is for someone that used to go to some like believe in some false religion. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, so yeah, nothing can rip you out of God's hand. Nothing. Like nothing can override God's power. Nothing is stronger than God's power. So you cannot be ripped out of, you know, you're in his hand. He, nothing can rip you out of there. Nothing can override that. So the witch doctor in some African village can't do it. Some random Satanist, you, you, some Satanist guy, nope, they can't do it. And nothing can harm you unless God allows it. So just remember that. Um, nor things present, nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to stay us from the love of God. So, nor any other creature. And, um, you know, no, 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 nothing can take away your salvation. Nothing can take away your eternity with God. You know, like in, in the book of Revelation, it says, like, don't don't fear that which can kill, you know, kill the flesh, kill, you know, the word, fear God who can cast you into hell. So, the Catholic Church, you know, and, or, they would they would threaten people with hell, but the, all the Catholic could sh could do was torture someone, and that's it. They could torture them and kill them. That's what the Catholic Church could do. But they could not cast that person into hell. They could not cast that Christian into hell. They could take away their physical life, but they could not cast that person into hell. They could not determine their eternity for them. Only God can do that. So re regardless of some, so just remember. Um, the your foundation should be the bible not other stuff and a, a lot of you know just remember like just keep that in mind like so, there are things that you might believe in that are traditions uh science fallacy so called philosophies of the world you might believe in things that are not biblical at all and call yourself a christian and yeah you are you are a christian you know if you trust in jesus christ as your as your savior and you want to serve god you're a christian but that does not mean you're perfect, and it does not mean that everything you believe is biblical. Uh, you can read the Bible for many years and still believe a lot of things that are wrong if you're taught wrong. Because unfortunately, what, what ends up happening is like, although people read their Bible, uh, they read it through the lens of what they've been taught. So whatever your preaching is at your church, that will probably overre overwrite the, what you're reading in the Bible. So if the Bible says one thing and your preacher says something else, you're probably going to believe your preacher. and Or, or you're going to read the Bible verse through the lens of the Christian culture that you're in or what your church is teaching. Unfortunately, that's the case because most people are followers. They're not leaders. Uh, they're not going to use critical thinking. They're not going to challenge the norms. Uh, that, that's just a sad fact. That, that, that's just how things are. And once in a while, you'll have like some revolutionary that comes with the new ideas, like you know, like Martin Luther, for example. He tried to reform the Catholic Church. At the time, like right now, we're like, yeah, that he was a good Christian. Back then, they thought he was crazy. Like, what are you doing? Why are you rebelling against the Catholic Church? And at the time, yeah, they thought he was crazy. So right now, like some of the ideas I'll, I'll say, um, you know, they're out of the Bible, but some people are going to think they're crazy. Like, I've never heard that before. And that, unfortunately, that's how it is. If you tell someone a thought they've never had before or something they've never heard, they're going to just think you're wrong. They'll, they'll never think like, oh, I just, maybe I've been wrong this whole time. Maybe I just haven't heard it. I've been around the wrong people. That could be the case. I mean, they could be wrong. This person that comes with you with this original thought, they could be wrong, but they also could be right. 